that is a processes that is a stack memory data memory and code memory the stack memory holds all the temporary data such as the local variables to the process usually starts at the highest memory address from the memory area allocated for the processes okay so usually starts at the highest memory address from the memory area allocated for the process means what this stack memory will start from the highest memory address right from the top of the memory the stack memory starts from the highest memory address and it will be growing towards down and data memory means what which will be responsible for holding all the global data with respect to the process and this is the data memory and the data memory will be growing upwards and the stack memory will be growing downwards so why the stack memory is growing downwards because it starts from the highest memory address the stack memory starts from highest memory address okay so the code memory contains all the information or the instructions related to the program code and the code memory will be fixed like this okay code memory size will be fixed but usually the stack memory and the data memory uh, width will be changing so that's why the arrow marks are shown the stack memory will be growing downwards and the data memory will be growing upwards on loading a process into a main memory a specific area of memory is allocated for process so whenever the process has been loaded into the main memory a uh, required amount of memory will be allocated for that processes and the, it will not be randomly allocating it will be allocating by uh, checking what type of a process and how much memory is required for its execution and how much stack memory is required everything will be taken care by pcb you know what is meant by pcb right process control block that one we have already discussed in the initial classes of this module 5 so process states and state transitions so the creation of a process to to its termination is not a single step so the process whenever it is being created and the process whenever it is getting terminated everything will not happen in a single step so creation of a process will take some time and if the process has to come to the termination stage means it has to move through the various stages or the various states right so you have seen the fsm right once it will be in a ready state then it will be enter into the idle state then it may be entering into the running state so likewise we have seen many stages right in the similar way the process once it has been created Im immediately it will not be executed and immediately it will not be coming to the termination stage it is not in a single step operation right the creation is one step it will be moving on to the various stages depending upon the type of the application and finally it will be reaching to the termination stages okay we will uh, understand this particular statement with some uh, diagram in the next slide so the process traverses through i mean the travels through the various series of states during its transition that is newly created state to the terminated state the cycle to which a process changes its states from a newly created to the execution completed is called as a process life cycle okay a process life cycle is represented to the state transition diagram as you can observe here see the process is been created right the process is created and it is undergoing many stages like it is going into the ready state and uh, then after it will be going into the running state and in between it may be blocked due to some reasons and may uh, and again it will be coming back to the ready then it will be coming back to the running then it will be completed so this is how the process will be created then at last it will be after the completion of executed execution it will be entering into the termination stage so this is these are some of the various stages right the process will be undergo undergoing in order to reach the completion stage so now after seeing this diagram i think you can understand what is meant by process life cycle so the cycle through which a process changes its states from newly created to execution completed is known as process life cycle so the cycle where it is getting started from newly created to the execution completed so this cycle is called as process life cycle okay process life cycle is represented through state transition diagram that whatever i have just shown now okay so what is this diagram that uh, explaining here so once the process is created 
so the incepted into the memory some memory is been allocated for that process so therefore the process is under the ready state now so once the process enters into the ready state when it has entered into the ready state only when the memory is been allocated for i mean the whatever the resources that are required for execution of a process so those when when all the resources are been made available for that process it will be entering into the ready state then schedule for execution whenever its schedule comes the cpu start executing so whenever the process is under the execution uh, the process is represented in running stage okay the process is uh, is right now it is in the ready stage so now why it is again going back to the ready is whenever the interrupt occurs so whenever an external interrupt occurs so this process will be no more in a running stage it will it will again go back to the ready state so after the execution of a interrupt okay whatever the interrupt that has been encountered in between during the execution of this particular process so once that particular interrupt gets executed completely so this particular process will be again not in the execution stage so therefore it again go back to the ready state i hope you have understood the first three things i'll come back to this block so created ready and running you understood all of you yes sir okay so if there is in case we'll just assume that if there is no interruption generated so when there is no interruption generated so the process will be executed completely and it will be coming to the last stage that is completed right so now we will come to the another scenario so when the process is under the execution so i mean to say that the process is under running stage so whenever the process is under the running stage okay so in between the process may require some resources it may require some extra memory for storing the intermediate results so at that time at that see here they have already told waiting for io it is requiring some resource that is io resources required but since the resources are not available at that instant readily so therefore the process is made to enter into the blocked stage why it is entering into the blocked stage because the resources that whatever it is required for the execution it is not available still it is not readily available it is utilized by some other process so hence for uh the process has entered into the block stage now so once the once it has entered into the block stage it is it can also be called as idle stage so the process will doesn't perform anything it will be just idle in this block stage now io completion or the shared resources acquired so once the shared resources are readily available once it is made or once it is provided to that uh process so it will be no longer in the blocked stage it will be going to the ready stage okay again the scheduling will be scheduling or scheduling for execution takes place and again it performs the execution finally if the execution is completed means it enters into the completion stage so this is the state transition diagram okay process state diagram so i mean to say that how the process is entering into the various stages and how the life cycle of this process happens from the creation till the termination understood next the process management the process management deals with so what how how you are managing this process so it it deals with the creation of a process and setting up of a memory and loading the process to the memory space setting up a pcb for a process and process termination and deletion so these are the important steps that it has to be taken care by the kernel then that steps if if all these steps are involved means then the concept is called as process management so this is how you are managing the process first you are creating once the process has been created you are allocating some memory so once the memory is allocated you are loading the processor to for execution and you are also setting up a pcb for controlling i mean for initiation or for deletion of the process so the pcb will be taking care of all such steps next we will be uh, i hope you have got an idea what is meant by a task what is meant by a process now we will be coming to the concept called as a thread so what is a thread a thread is the primitive that can execute the code okay a thread is a single sequential flow of control within a process a thread is also known as a lightweight process so these are the various definitions that are being given for a thread so what is the third line says a 
thread is also known as a lightweight process means what can i call the thread as a sub part of process or a small part of the process so a thread is a small part of the process okay so if you just go back here here a task a task is what a, a part of the execution a program or a part of an execution is called as a process so a ta uh, first is task then a part of a task is called as a process and a part of a process is called as thread understood a thread is a single sequential flow of a control within a process a thread is a lightweight process a process can have many threads of execution so a process is made of many threads because a thread is nothing but a lightweight process or nothing but a small part of the process so by making uh, in order to make a process many threads are required so different threads which are part of a process share the same address space this is very important it may be different threads which is a part of a process but it will be having the same address space why it is having the same address space because all these threads are related to a single process okay so share the same address process share the data memory code memory and heap memory so all these memories that is a data code and heap memory will be shared so threads maintain their own thread status like cpu program counter and stack so each and every thread will be having a separate status like cpu pc and stack so the stack memory will be different for thread one stack memory will be uh, i mean to say that for each and every thread there will be a separate allocation of stacks and data memory and code memory it is not allocated for each and every individual threads it is allocated directly for process so multi threading advantages so what is the advantage of using this multi thread so we cannot rely on a single thread because as we have already discussed the thread is nothing but what is meant by a thread a thread is nothing but a lightweight process and the process is made by making use of so many threads so whenever we are talking about so many threads that is nothing but a multi threading okay we will try to understand what are the advantages of this multi threading so better memory utilization when more number of threads are there means it will be utilized the memory will be utilized in a better manner see here so code memory is separate for i mean the code memory is allocated for whole process and data memory is allocated for whole process okay but stack memory it is not like that there is a individual stack memory for thread 1 and there is a individual stack memory for thread 2 and for thread 3 thread 3 like that and again the registers are also different for each and every threads so whenever we are going for a multi thread these stacks whatever that is available we are making use effectively and using it efficiently right we are not uh, searching see instead of searching the whole book if you want a particular content instead of searching the whole book if that if you know that this particular content is available from 10 to 20 pages it is very easy right for you to go uh, it is very easy for you to search it right so similarly so the thread is oper uh, the thread is a particular small process and thread 2 is a small process thread 3 is a small process so for that process whatever the variables are required that will be stored in the stack and whatever the variables or the resources uh, i mean whatever the variables or the data that is required for execution of a thread 2 that will be available in a separate stack so if this is if this separate stacks are made available for each and every threads then it is very easy for accessing the data or or any other intermediate results okay so since the process is split into the different threads when one thread enters into the wait stage the cpu can utilize by another it is very simple right when one process enters into the wait stage the another process will be executed similarly when one thread see within a within a process there are so many threads when one thread has entered into the wait stage another thread of the same process may be executed so try to understand the internal part of this process thread okay hence efficient cpu utilization the cpu is engaged all the time speeds up the execution of the process so now what is the advantage of this here uh, in this is when there are so many multiple threads 
when thread 1 has entered into the wait stage means the CPU can be allocated for thread 2. Instead of making the CPU to jump or instead of making the CPU to switch over from one process to another process. It is very simple if there is having a context switching from one thread to another thread of a same process. Right. So this is one of the advantage of multi threading. So user level threads. So there are various threads levels. So one one thread level may be with respect to user and another thread level may be with respect to the kernel. So what is meant by user level threads? A user level thread do not have the operating system support. Okay, user level threads doesn't have the operating system support. They exist solely in the running process. Even if a process contains a multiple threads, the operating system treats it as a single thread and will not switch the execution among the different threads of it. So from this, what you have to understand is, so this user level thread does not have any operating system or the kernel. The operating system treats it as a single thread and will not switch the execution among the different threads. So kernel level thread, it is not like that. So the kernel level threads are individual units of execution, which the operating system uh, treats them as a separate threads. So the operating system interrupts the execution of currently running kernel thread, switches the execution to another kernel level thread. So what is the difference between this user level and kernel level is first difference is first of all, it, is, it doesn't have the user level doesn't have the operating system support, but the kernel level, it is not like that. The kernel, the kernel is nothing but the core of an operating system, right? As we have discussed. So the kernel level threads will be having the operating system support. That is the first difference between these two coming to the second difference. So the switching doesn't happen. In the case of user level, see the operating system treats treats this as a single thread and will not switch over for the different threads for its execution. But here it is not like that. The kernel switch over to the another kernel thread. So why this switching happening here? Why the switching doesn't happen here? Because in order to make itself for the hundred percent utilization, right? For that purpose, there is a switch over. So the threads preemption, which is also called as a context switching. So from so many days, I was using the term called as a context switching, right? As user level threads has to be mapped for kernel level thread for execution, following models are used many to one model and one to one model and many to many model. So these are the various models available. So what is meant by preemption? What is a threads preemption? We will try to understand now. So preemption means whichever that is under the execution, so due to some reasons that execution has been stopped immediately and there is a switching from one process to or from one thread to another thread that is called as preemption. You are leaving, right? Whatever that is under the execution, you are leaving and I'm going. So I can give a simple example. Right now I'm running a class for fourth semester. Okay. So due to some instant, I'm leaving your class. Okay. I'm leaving your class at this instant without noticing anything. Okay, I'll be moving on to the next class that is sixth semester. That is called as a preemption. So threads preemption means what? So the thread which is under the execution that will be left, the execution will be left instantly and it will be having a context switching for another thread. So why it is happening because of various reasons, we will understand why it is happening and why this particular concept is coming. All those things we'll try to understand. So as user level threads has to be mapped for kernel level thread for execution, models are used many to one model, many user level threads are mapped to a single kernel thread. Okay, so various user level threads are mapped to a single kernel level thread. A kernel treats all the user level threads as a single thread. So what the kernel will do, even though the various level threads are being mapped, those all those various uh, threads will be considered as a single thread. The execution switching among the user level thread happens when a currently executing user level thread voluntarily blocks itself or relinquishes the CPU. So execution switching among the user level thread happens when, when does the execution will be stopped whenever the thread voluntarily blocks, okay, voluntarily blocks or relinquishes the CPU or it makes the CPU free 
for execution for other threads so such type of such type such type can be seen under the solaris green threads and gnu portable one to one means what uh, each user level thread has been bonded to a kernel level thread see here many user level threads are mapped to a single kernel that's why it is many to one one to one means what each user level thread has been bonded to a single kernel level thread so example for this is windows and linux threads many to many means what many user level threads are been mapped to many kernel level threads and examples are windows nt 2000 with thread fiber package okay so it will be dealing with respect to the models whenever it is executing many to one one to one and many to many so this many to one and one to one and many to many is nothing but with respect to what user level thread and kernel level thread so now we will try to understand what is the difference between the thread and process which is very important in most of the exams uh, you can observe this question but of course even though there is no exam but try to understand the concept a thread is a single unit of execution and it is a part of process no exam means there is a third internals okay so thread is a single unit of execution and it is a part of the process a process is a program in execution and contains one or more threads so i hope you have understood the difference in the first line itself a thread is a single unit i can tell that a thread is a small part of the process but process is a whole program in execution and contains more than one or more threads a thread does not have its own data memory and heap memory it shares the data memory and heap memory with the whole process process has its own code memory and data memory and stack memory this one we have already seen with respect to one diagram a thread cannot live independently it lives within the process but a process contains at least one thread so try to understand the third difference it is very uh, it looks it, it explains the whole concept a thread cannot live independently means what a uh, thread is itself within the process so thread only a thread we cannot consider as a whole process but coming to the process a, uh, we can call it as a process only if it has a one having a single thread in it so there can be a multiple threads in a process the first thread calls the main function and occupies the start of the stack memory so threads within a process shares the code data and heap memory each thread holds separate memory area for stack threads are very inexpensive to create but process are very expensive to create involves the operating system overhead also context switching is inexpensive whenever there is a context switching between one thread to another thread but the context switching is very complex whenever there is a context switching from or between from one process to another process so if a thread expires its stack is reclaimed by the process if the process dies the resources allocated to it are recla reclaimed by the operating system and all the associated threads of the process also dies so now we will come to the multitask multi processing and multitasking concept so we have discussed about multi threading right in the previous slide we have discussed about multi threading and what are all the advantages of having the multi threading right so after listening to this particular concept shall i ask a simple question whether context switching with respect to thread is easy or context switching with respect to process is easy can anyone give the answer have you heard the question context yes, thread yes very good so context switching with whenever the context switching happens with respect to threads is easy because there is no much information that has to be exchanged because the threads are within the process so therefore that's why they have told here context switching is inexpensive and fast with respect to the threads okay but the context switching is very complex and involves a lot of operating system overhead whenever there is a context switching from one process to another process okay so very briefly we'll understand what is this multi processing then we will be concluding the class so the ability to execute a multiple processes simultaneously so that is called as a multi processing okay 
so systems which are capable of performing multi processing is called as or known as multi processor systems multi processor systems processes a multiple cpus and can execute a multiple processes simultaneously so whenever there should be an execution of multiple processes means obviously there should be a utilization of multiple cpus okay the ability of an operating system to have a multiple programs in the memory which are ready for execution is referred to as multi programming okay so with this uh, we will conclude the class and we'll try please answer your attendance